DTP vaccine African genocide. A wave of gruesome brain injuries and deaths followed the introduction of diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis vaccines in the United States and Europe in the 1970s. DTP vaccines. As early as 1977, a study published by British physicians and researchers in The Lancet established that the risks of the whole-cell pertussis jab used in the DTP vaccine exceeded the risks associated with wild pertussis. Six years later, a 1983 NIH-funded UCLA study found that Wyeth's DTP vaccine was killing or causing severe brain injury, including seizures and death in one in every 300 vaccinated children. The resultant lawsuits caused the collapse of insurance markets for vaccines and threatened to bankrupt the industry. Wyeth, now Pfizer, claimed to be losing $20 in downstream liability for every dollar it earned on vaccine sales and induced Congress to pass the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act in 1986, shielding vaccine makers from liability. In 1985, the Institute of Medicine, IOM, recommended the abandonment of the whole cell version of the pertussis vaccine to avert the high incidence of encephalopathy and deaths. In 1991, the United States, European Union, and Japan switched to a far safer but less effective dead cell attenuated vaccine, DTaP, and discontinued use of the DTP jab. While Western nations pulled the DTP, the WHO gave pharma free reign and cash to dump its toxic inventories into Africa, Asia, and Central America, despite strong evidence of its deadly impacts. Its dangers aside, the old DTP is cheaper to manufacture and more lucrative for pharma. And so, after 2002, Bill Gates and his surrogates, Gavi, the WHO, Global Fund, made DTP the flagship for their African vaccine program and continued giving this neurotoxic and often lethal vaccine to some 156 million African children annually. The WHO's use of DTP as its bellwether vaccine to measure national compliance with the WHO's vaccine schedule, has made DTP today the most popular vaccine on Earth. Health ministries across the world must demonstrate specific uptake goals with the DTP recommendations in order to qualify for vital WHO assistance for HIV and other support. I'd like to add my own notation here. My one critique with the book I'm reading is every time HIV is mentioned. I'd like to point the reader to a documentary to a 2009 film by director Brent Luong, W sorry, Brent Luong, L E U N G, 2009. The documentary is called House of Numbers. It's a documentary that will blow your freaking mind about HIV and AIDS. The short story is HIV is not a real thing. It'll blow your mind. 
Okay, so that's my own asterisk from this page here. I'm going to jump back in. Prior to 2017, neither HHS nor the WHO, 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 sorry, I'm going to jump right back in. I got a little distracted. Uh, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Health ministries across the world must demonstrate specific uptake goals with the DTP recommendations in order to qualify for vital WHO assistance for HIV and other support. So basically, the bribe is you have to get injected with this death poison. You have to inject your population with this neurotoxin and death poison in in order to get funding from the WHO. you got to get bribed by killing and injuring your population to get some more funding. Prior to 2017, neither HHS or the WHO performed the kind of study necessary to ascertain whether the DTP vaccine was actually yielding the beneficial health outcomes about which Bill Gates frequently boasts. That year, the Danish government and the Scandinavian vaccine behemoths Staten's Serum Institute and Novo Nordisk commissioned prominent Scandinavian scientists Soren Morgensen and Peter Aby, both vocal champions of the Africa vaccine program, to lead an illustrious team of international researchers to examine all-cause mortalities after the DTP inoculations. That massive study put the lie to Bill Gates's mantric incantation that his investment in the DTP vaccine has saved millions of lives. In June 2017, the team published a peer-reviewed study in eBiomedicine, a high-gravitas journal in Elsevier's public uh, publishing house. In sorry. That massive study put the lie to Bill Gates's mantric incantation that his investment in the DTP vaccine has saved millions of lives. In June 2017, the team published a peer-reviewed study in Eobiomedicine, a high-gravitas journal in Elsevier's publishing house Armada. The article parsed data from a so-called natural experiment in Guinea-Bissau, where half the children in certain age groups were vaccinated and the other half were not. The division was randomized. That 2017 study, Morganson et al., 2017, shows that following their DTP immunization at three months, vaccinated girls had tenfold higher mortality rates than unvaccinated children. The girls were dying of a wide range of diseases, pneumonia, anemia, malaria, dysentery, and for two decades, no one noticed that the dying children were predominantly those who received the vaccine. The DTP vaccine while protecting children against diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, had ruined their immune systems, making them vulnerable to a wide range of deadly non-target infections. Morganson's team arrived at the conclusion, as had the 1977 Lancet study researchers exactly 40 years earlier, quote, DTP vaccine may kill more children from other causes than it saves from diphtheria, tetanus, or pertussis. In other words, Bill Gates's DTP vaccine, instead of saving 10 million lives, as he claims, may have unnecessarily killed millions of African girls. <clears throat> 
At least seven other studies have confirmed DTP's association with high mortality in vaccinated girls compared to unvaccinated. The idealistic Americans who donated to Bill Gates's African vaccine project, believing they were saving African babies, were actually funding a continent-wide female genocide. After completing the study and verifying its shocking results, Peter Abey, a virtual deity among African vaccine researchers, made an impassioned and remorseful plea to the WHO to reconsider the DTP vaccine. Quote, I guess most of you think that we know what our vaccines are doing, he says. We do not. 